What's up guys, War here, and today I'm gonna to take you through a basic crash course of all the general items in Path of Exile. Let's do it. In Path of Exile, there can be a lot of items and it can seem very, very overwhelming, but I'm gonna give you a general base on all the basic items that you need to know and understand during your first playthrough experience of Path of Exile. So let's just break everything down. So in our stash tab, we're gonna to go to our currency tab because you can get these via the shop which I think is a very important tab that you can get. You can go to stash tabs and you can buy just the basic currency tab for 75C, which is very, very helpful. It makes things super, super easy to understand and just kind of sort through. So in Path of Exile, there is a huge amount of currency and other items that you can use in the game to manipulate, craft, buy, sell, and trade and use to redo your skills, upgrade items there's a lot to take in and it can seem a bit overwhelming but we're going to give you a crash course through this basic currency tab because this is everything that you're going to need to know as a beginner in path of exile so path of exile with all the of the different currencies you can see here there's a bunch of different ones that you can do maps there's uh essence cards here that you can get or cards there's essences there's blight there's uh, delve, you know, delirium, then you got all your skill gems, you got all your potions, etc. But I want to focus on some of the basics and just break all this down. So in Path of Exile, because of all of it, there's not a general currency like there is in other games like Diablo, um, where it's just flat gold. I would say that in Path of Exile, the main currency that's used to trade and buy and sell items with other players is Chaos Orbs but you can use other items to buy, sell, and trade with. Uh, the vendors use a lot of these other items here to buy and sell. So if I go to Lily and I want to buy some of these, you can see it costs one orb of transmutation. You can see some that cost uh, orbs of alteration. So through the vendors, it's a different ball game when it comes to buying and selling items. Like Commander Kirk, we go here, it's one scroll of wisdom plus two orbs of chance. So. Amongst the players, it's pretty common knowledge for Chaos Orbs, but with vendors and other things like that, NPCs in the game, you're going to be using other items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and break down all of these items, at least the main ones that you need to know. That way you have a better understanding. So Chaos Orbs, let's start with the basics. Chaos Orbs, it reforges your item with new modifiers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys an item and we're just going to reforge it. So let me grab this, this piece. So Chaos Orbs reforge a rare item with random modifiers, okay? So this has a bunch of modifiers, which we're gonna talk about in a different video because it's a lot to get into with prefixes and suffixes and implicits and all that stuff. It's a lot to understand. But Chaos Orb is just gonna re-roll this. So you can see if I right click and then I left click, it re-rolled my entire piece. Now I don't advise using Chaos Orbs to re-roll a lot of your items because they're such a valuable commodity in the community. <clears throat> but that's what that does. It re-rolls everything, gives you brand new prefixes and suffix modifiers on your gear piece. Now, another one is the Orb of Scouring. This is gonna remove all modifiers from an item. So if we right click and you wanna reset this item, we're gonna, it takes it back to its very base form. So as you can see, this is a great item. This is your base item level. Now you have Orb of Transmutation, which is gonna upgrade a normal item to a magic item. So you got gray, which is your normal item. Then we're gonna apply the Orb of Transmutation, which makes this a magic item, which is blue. And then it gives it a random prefix and suffix added onto it. These are completely random. So you don't know which ones that you're gonna get. Now, next you have Orb of Alteration. This acts the same way as a Chaos Orb, as a Chaos Orb reforges a rare item with new modifiers, the Orb of Alteration reforges a magic item with random modifiers. So we're gonna do this again and it reforges it completely, okay? Reforges it completely. Now you, I only have one uh, Orb of Annulment so I'm not gonna use it because these are really tough to get right now. But an Orb of Annulment removes a random modifier from an item. So as an example, let me just get these, let me just get two here, there we go. So if I use my, orb of annulment what it would do is we have two modifiers on here we have a max life modifier and an increased flask effect duration modifier 
the orb or or orb the orb of annulment is going to remove one of those modifiers at random so you can see that like in the end game and higher level items i have six modifiers here now now the the orb of annulment when you want to get a particular one taken away the odds are much harder on a higher level item as compared to an item that only has two modifiers so the orb of annulment just removes one of these modifiers at random next is our orb of chance this is just going to upgrade a normal item to a random rarity so we're going to use our orb of scouring reset this because it needs to be a normal item meaning gray and we're going to use an orb of chance and it makes it magic this could make this rare it could make the item rare it doesn't mean that it's always going to be magic let's try it one more time just to see if we can get it to be rare nope okay so it's magic again so the orb of chance just upgrades it to a random rarity so it's not too bad i don't use these too much so uh it's it's okay but this is what that does next we have the the transmutation and alteration shards these shards all these shards do is just once you get a stack of 20 they become a regular orb of transmutation next we have the orb of augmentation this augments a magic item with a new random modifier so what this means is that let's oops, excuse me we're going to re-roll see how we only have one modifier here which is the increased flask duration so if we take the orb of augmentation it's going to add a new random modifier max life so because a magic item can only have two modifiers on it at, at a time that's why we're only getting the additional one now it augments a magic item only okay now an exalted orb is the same thing as an orb of augmentation but it's going to augment a rare item with a random modifier i don't have this rare yet so and i only have one exalted orb and i'm trying to save these but it, it does the same exact thing as an orb it only applies to a magic or a rare item now how do we get this blue magic item to rare that'll be the regal orb i don't mind using this one but this is what's going to upgrade this item from blue to rare okay now it upgrades it and adds one modifier to the item as you can see we got increased fire res so now if i wanted to use the exalt orb and add another random modifier we would just have four modifiers instead of three so that's what a regal orb does now an orb of alchemy is our next item it upgrades a normal item to a rare item so if we use a orb of scouring which removes all the modifiers takes it back down to normal if we use a orb of alchemy it makes it a rare item and gives us a bunch of random um affixes or modifiers on here so we got we ended up getting five modifiers on here which isn't too bad uh you can only have six total um and then there's other modifiers that you can get like implicits and other things that we'll talk about in a different video but the orb of alchemy upgrades a normal item to a rare item so it during the game through your campaign you can get a lot of really good items that are gray and just make them rare and they become even more powerful all right so same thing here alchemy shard and chaos shard once you get a big enough stack they become the normals now let's talk about the items up here so we got a scroll of fragment once you get five it becomes a scroll of wisdom scroll of wisdom identifies an item so there's a lot of items that you can get that are, are unidentifiable. So let me go to my maps really quickly. See if I have one just so you guys can see. I don't know if I have one or not. There we go. So see how this map says unidentified. So you don't know what it is or what the modifiers are. If you have a scroll of wisdom, like I always carry here, you right click and it identifies the item and it reveals everything that's on the item. The scroll of wisdom and the scroll of or portal scroll are pretty common. These are the most some of the most used items in the game. A portal scroll is going to give you a portal that takes you back to your um, your maps best like your maps home base. So if I go here to the coast and I use a portal, it's going to take me to Lion's Eyes Watch. And Lion's Eyes Watch is the home base of Act One. So we're here at the line side watch and you can see here that's the home base that i'm at now so portal scrolls and wisdom scrolls are pretty much carried unanimously through everybody those are pretty common next you have the enkinkling orb it adds an enchantment to a utility flask uh, that will improve 
or improve it, but prevent it from gaining charges during its effect, replacing any existing enchantments. The instilling orb as an enchantment to the utility flask that will cause it to be used when certain conditions are met. As an example, you can see this, it says when charges reach full. So as an example, let's just grab one. Or actually, what level is that? Let's just grab, perfect, we'll grab this quick silver flask, okay? So if we use a enkinkling orb, it adds increased duration, but gains no charges during effect. So that adds an enchantment on there. Now, if we were to upgrade this to magic, you can see that that enchantment effect is a different set of modifiers on the item. So now let's go to the instilling orb. It's gonna add an enchantment, but now it'll replace it. So now it's used when you become ignited. This is completely random, and these things are used to really augment and make these flasks really nice. All my flasks are used when charges reach full, meaning that as I'm killing monsters, and this flask fills up, once it's full, the flask is used and I get all the abilities that are on the flask. It's pretty cool. All right, next we have blacksmith and armorer scraps. These improve the quality of your weapons and armor. As an example, you can see here that underneath bow, it says quality 20. Okay, quality 20. You use the blacksmith wheat stone to increase the quality of a weapon and you use the armorer scrap to increase the quality of an armor. Now, just to showcase here that when you're using an armor scrap on an armor piece, oh, it's not armor. Let me grab an, a random armor piece here. Uh, let's grab, we, that's already 20. Perfect, let's grab this and then I'll grab a random weapon just so you guys can see because I think this is, whoops. All right, perfect. So on an armor piece, you can see it has zero quality. Now, if I add the scrap to it, we get 1% increased quality. You can only have 20 maximum quality, so it would take 20 of these. That doesn't seem very efficient, right? So if we go and we grab like these boots, for example, we grab these boots and we scour it. If it's a normal item, it increases it by five instead of one. So now it only takes me four armor scraps to make this 20 quality, right? Only takes me four and now we're max as opposed to doing 20 because it's rare. That's gonna be down in a different video on how to do that stuff, but that's just the basics. Same thing on a unique item. So if we add this, it's only gonna add one. Unfortunately, unique items can't be scoured. So it's gonna take 20 if we really wanna increase this to its maximum. But that is uh, blacksmith and armor scraps and wheat stones. Next, we have glass blower's bobble, which is the same thing as these two, but you improve the quality of a flask. The same thing here, if it's not normal, it's one a piece, so it would take 20. Otherwise, it would take four, or excuse me, five if you're doing it on a normal item. Same thing with gem cutter's prism. It improves the quality of a gem, which is your skills. So you can see here that I only have one, which is Tornado Shot. It says quality 20. The glass or gem cutter's prism it what is what you use to upgrade that. Now, there is a trick to that. We'll talk about that later. Next, we have the cartographer's chisel. This is the same thing. It improves the quality of a map. So you can see that the qual or excuse me, the quality of the map is, is already on there, the quantity. But if we increase this, it takes it up by quality one. And same thing, if it's a normal item, we only have to spend five or excuse me, four as opposed to 20 if it's a rare item. Next, we have Orbs of Regret. Using this grants a passive skill to refund a point. So if I redo this and I go to my passive skill tree, I have a refund point to change my skills. Those are pretty, pretty good. I would hold on to all of those. Same thing with the Orb of Unmaking. It's an Atlas passive tree refund point. So if I use that and then I go to my Atlas tree here, I have refund points to redo my Atlas tree however I want, one point per node. Next, we have the Blessed Orb, which randomizes the value of implicit modifiers on an item. So as an example, let's use, let's do this, let's make this rare. So the values, the meaning the, the fleet value of 64 to 82 evasion rating, it's gonna change that. Mine's a 67, so let's use the Blessed Orb that has no mods to modify. Oh, it's the implicit values, I'm sorry. 
it's the implicits so that would be like the if we enchanted the item so if the item had an implicit on it let's see if i have one i'm sorry i read that wrong so i don't have any implicits on here so this is an implicit so the 10 percent increased attack speed is the implicit modifier so i already have it maxed but a bless orb would randomize the value of that modifier and change it we already have it at maximum but this is another way you can get it and then last but not least is val orbs val orbs correct an item modifying it unpredictably so if we go to that map that we had right you see all the modifiers that are on the map if we take a val orb it corrupts it and changes those modifiers and adds some so it ergo making it harder right now making it it does make it better but it's harder right because we get more rewards the monsters are tougher so it makes it harder be very very weary about using these because once an item is corrupted you cannot change it whatsoever so guys these are the basics when it comes to basic items that you need as a new player going through the game now a few ones that i do want to highlight is your potions you have all these different potions that are mana potions right healing potions and then you have a bunch of different potions that do things like the um this bismuth flask this is a very good one to have as an early player because it increases all of your elemental resistances by 35 very very strong you always want to have mana flasks and you always want to have healing flasks until you get to the higher level the flasks are pretty straightforward the quality is there if it's there the last meaning the duration of when you use it how long it lasts for so if i press w you can see the little bar next to it see it see it going see how long it lasts for because it lasts for six seconds then it's done right then you have the bonus that you get from it which is 20 percent evasion in this case and it creates a smoke cloud the consumes of 40 to 60 charges meaning that a flask has 60 charges and when you use it it consumes 23 of the 60 charges meaning that if i use this again i i have 23 charges that are being used so i could effectively cast this two and a half times before it's completely empty and i would need to kill monsters to refill it after that you have your skill gems these are pretty basic items that you're going to get not only through the game completing quests and doing turn-ins but buying them from vendors lily is the best person to buy these from you get all you can go through and see everything that she has for sale in all of the different colors which is really really cool the gems are your skills the gems are your skills and you want to color coordinate these into your weapons and armor like we talked about in another video but these are pretty straightforward you have your attack spell or your attack skill then you have support skills so like trinity is a support skill it says it at the top whereas like tornado shot is an attack skill so that's how you can know that it's a defensive skill or an offensive skill to use an attack skill is how you attack the enemy a support skill is is a skill that supports an attack skill or a defensive skill and then you have other ones that are critical support which increases things on your attack skill then you have defensive skills like dread banner which is uh a support skill that gives me things then you have auras like precision haste these things give you non-stop buffs which is why you see these things up here i have precision which increases my crit strike chance haste which increases my attack cast speed and move speed and then grace which gives me additional evasion so there's a lot of different skill gems when you're first starting out i would definitely just follow the guides and just get skills that you need for that build so guys those are all the general items we're gonna have another video uh coming soon that'll give you more in-depth explanation and how other items are used like our fragments our our maps our essences the delve the the um fossils delirium and other things like that your blight items so but i wanted to give you a very basic understanding oh we have three more items i'm sorry we have the jeweler's orb we have orb of fusing and chromatic orb so what these do so jeweler's orb reforges the number of sockets on an item so we have two sockets here boots can have a maximum of four sockets so if we use this it'll just randomly change it and once you get four right you can boom we're done 
Now, Orb of Fusing reforges the links. You can see these links between the items. So now we max all four links. Good, depending on your build, you may change this, but boom. Chromatic reforges the color sockets. You can see I have one red and three green. My boots need two green, a red, and a blue if I was gonna replace them, so we're just gonna roll. Two greens, red, and blue. Now, I do wanna keep in mind and just give you a little tip here is that these are evasion boots. So see how it says evasion at the top? There's evasion type boots, there's armor type boots, and energy shield type boots. Each one of these have a corresponding color with that. So evasion meaning more green, which means that these boots will roll more green than anything else. Armor, which will be more red than anything else, and energy shield, which is more blue than anything else. It's not to say that you can't get the colors you need like I just did, but when you're rolling it randomly, just know that those colors are rolled more often. But yeah, guys, those are all the items that'll get you through the basics of Path of Exile. I really hope that this video helped, guys. I'm This whole beginner series is amazing because we have so many brand new players coming. So I wanted to make this just for all you brand new players. So like the video, comment down below. Let me know if this video has helped you. If there's any other basic items that you guys need a better understanding about, let me know because the advanced guide will be coming later. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.